Last year, my husband and I decided to clean out our attic, which was in our two-story home. It was long overdue, and none of us had been up there in over a year. The attic wasn't very big, and neither of us used it. However, we did have some things up there that had been stored up there for years. We finally decided that the space could be put to better use. We both went up there one Saturday morning and looked inside. There were a few boxes and old pieces of furniture. It really wasn't that bad. We grabbed a couple of boxes and brought them down. I asked my husband to go through one of the boxes because it was mainly his things in there. Then I went back up to get some more. When I went back up, I got a couple more boxes. But as I was up there, I thought that I heard a noise come from the back corner of the attic. I looked but I saw nothing. Nevertheless, I was pretty freaked out and ran back downstairs. My husband asked me what the problem was, and I told him I heard a noise up there. We both decided to go back up together and investigate. When we got up there, everything seemed normal, and I walked over to the corner where I had heard the noise. My husband followed to look, but just then, we both heard a noise from directly behind us where the door was. We turned around at the same time to see the door to the attic being slammed shut. It was so fast I didn't see who had shut the door but it was now closed. My husband and I both looked at each other in shock. Who just did that, he asked. He then walked over to the door to open it, but the doorknob had been broken off from the inside. We both tried to get out, but couldn't seem to open the door with no knob on it. We heard some movement throughout the rest of our house as we did. It was very creepy, and luckily we did have our phones on us, so I decided to call the police. My husband then put a large piece of furniture in front of the door, so whoever was in our house could at least not get back in the attic where we were. I explained the situation to the police, and they said they would arrive shortly. We waited and looked out our window as well as listened to hear for more noises in the rest of our house. We didn't really hear anything more, though, as we waited. We looked around the attic, but didn't see any evidence to indicate that someone had been up there. Several minutes later, we saw out the window the police arriving in our driveway, and we waved out to them. They made their way into the house and up to the attic when they opened the door for us. They told us whoever had been in our house was now gone. Our back door had been left open and they didn't find anybody inside. Whoever it was didn't appear to take anything or mess up the house at all, which was a little bit surprising to me. We were able to finish cleaning out the attic and replace the doorknob in the days after. We didn't know how the person got into our attic in the first place or what they wanted but I also found it creepy how they knew to remove the doorknob so we couldn't get out. This story happened last spring. I was doing some spring cleaning in my house like I did every year. As soon as the weather would get warm, I would organize through things and then have a big yard sale. I went through many things around the house and then took out several boxes of things we were selling outside because it was such a nice day out. Once we had everything outside, we would organize it and decide how much we would charge for it at our yard sale. I was cleaning by myself on this day and went through quite a few things and had a decent number of boxes outside by the time I had been cleaning for a few hours. When I was on my way out to the driveway to put some more things out, I saw a man walking up my driveway and towards my garage. We had a detached garage, which was open at the time, and I didn't recognize this man at all. It was really unusual for something like this to happen, and I called out to the man and asked him what he was doing. But he didn't answer me. He just kept walking until he was inside of my garage. Now I was a little bit worried, because we had tools and other things in there he could steal, or even use as a weapon. Still, I decided to follow the man inside and hope that he didn't have any bad intentions. Maybe he just thought he was at another house or something. I walked over to the garage and went inside. When I got inside, I couldn't find him. I walked all around, which wasn't that big, just a single car garage, and we didn't have a car in there at the time. I walked around it twice, but never saw the man. Other than the large garage door in front, we only had one other door in the back of the garage, but it was covered at the time by our old trash cans. I just didn't see how on earth the man could go and just seemingly disappear like that. I was a little bit spooked and then went back and decided to bring the boxes just inside my house. I organized the rest of the things as usual, and on the next day set up for our yard sale. I planned to have part of the sale in our garage and the rest in our driveway. As I was setting up things in the garage, I couldn't help but feel a little creeped out by remembering the man who seemingly vanished in there the day before. 
The next day, we held our yard sale. I sat about midway down the driveway at a table and chair with a little cash register, and before long, people started to show up. Things were going well until one of the shoppers came up to me. She told me that there was a creepy man hiding in a garbage can in the garage. I decided to go over and look. I felt more brave with a few people being around, and when I got to the garbage can in the garage, I opened it up and saw the same man from before. He didn't look at me, but aggressively jumped out and sprinted away. Everyone seemed really surprised at what they had seen. I'm really glad the man didn't cause any major problems, but it's really creepy to think how he was likely in my garage for several days. Several years back, I was cleaning out my house. I was renting a house for a year, and the year was almost up. I wasn't going to be living there the next year, so it was time for me to start cleaning out and moving my stuff to my next place. The house that I had at the time was fairly small, but it was plenty of space for just me. I lived there by myself, and I had just finished cleaning out the living room, other than some basic furniture, and I had moved on to clean the kitchen. There were quite a few cabinets, so many that I didn't use a good number of them. I was looking through some of the ones that I didn't use to make sure that there was nothing I had in them. One of them I opened up, and I saw something in the back corner. It looked like some type of shirt or rag. I grabbed it and saw that I didn't think it was mine, but when I moved it, it revealed a small white lever that I could barely see. The cabinet was in the corner, sort of by the sink, and halfway blocked by the stove. I thought it was just another pipe, but it just looked a little different to me. I got inside and had to crawl inside the cabinet, which was pretty large. Once I got inside, I saw there was a small trap door to the side leading into the wall. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You had to be completely inside in order to see the detail of it, and I decided to open the door, which led to an extremely narrow hallway with a sort of crawl space. But when I got farther inside, I was horrified. I saw that there was food, as well as several blankets as if someone had been living inside of there. The good news, at least to me, is that whoever was in there was gone. I tried to make sense of it and figure out how long the person had been there and how I didn't know about it. I was gone from the house a lot with work and other stuff, but I didn't know how it was possible for someone to live in there without me knowing. I continued cleaning until it got pretty late, and the next day after work I continued. I was still kind of in shock with finding a secret room in my house and decided to look at it once again. I opened the cabinet and went inside, then I pulled the lever open just like I had the previous day. But this time, as soon as I opened it, I saw movement and then saw a person for a split second. They slammed the door back shut on me, and I immediately turned and ran all the way out of my house to my car, and then called the police. I was so scared that I started driving away as well. I told the police the whole situation, and they came to my house a short time later to find that whoever had been there was now gone. Luckily for me, I moved out the next week. I really don't know how long the person was living in my secret room but thankfully it never gave me a problem. Back when we moved into our house, we were introduced to all of our neighbors by them coming to our house with cookies or brownies, kind of like they do in the movies. This was a nice, quiet, middle-class neighborhood made up of mostly older white people and new families. I mention that because we were the only black family in the neighborhood. No black wives, husbands, not even adopted children. We didn't really find it strange though. It was just very clear that we were different. I was about 13 years old at the time and my brother was 15. Our backyard was about a half an acre and is fenced, but it's also connected to two other houses backyards. Each one is about half the size of ours, but we all have separating fences. So to paint a picture, there's a T-shaped fence separating our backyards. The house to the left was the home of an older man named Tom. He kind of reminded me of Willie Nelson, but without the cool pigtails. He liked to be outside shirtless and usually with a denim vest, no matter what the weather was. He was a pretty well-built man, but visibly kind of frail. We actually found him to be quite funny, in a creepy old guy type of way. As I got older, he had started to make comments. 
I played in the backyard with my dogs a lot, and Tom could see me in his living room window that faced his backyard. Whenever I glanced over, I could always see him in the window just standing there watching me. When he noticed that I saw him, he'd come out and talk to me. I would try to get away before he would come out, but sometimes I was just too slow. I didn't want to make it too obvious, so I would just walk. But if I didn't make it inside, he'd yell for me to come back. I never got too close to the fence, though. I'd speak from a distance. He would ask me about school, what grade I was in, tell me I was pretty, and ask if I was old enough to have a boyfriend. Also, if I had an older sister or older friends that looked like me. It was pretty weird, but I'd just laugh it off. But after a few questions, he'd stop talking to me and just stare at me, silently. I would always give an excuse about needing to go inside, and he would nod and stand at the fence and just watch me walk back into the house. This kind of thing happened almost weekly. My mom really loves to decorate, so she changes the house decor every few months or so. It's pretty annoying, actually. During one of her designing sprees, she had decided to get a new sliding glass door for the back porch, which required her to take the curtains down in the living room. It took forever to get them installed, but she figured that there was no point in putting the curtains back up if we'd have to take them back down again. Fine, I guess. Now, our family TV was in the living room. I didn't have a TV in my room, so I'd often watch TV late into the night in the living room with my brother. One night, my brother went to bed pretty early, so I decided to watch TV by myself that night. Right around midnight or so, I had turned off the TV so I could go to bed. I got up from the couch, turned off the light, and then turned around to see another light on. Not in my house, but in Tom's house. It was in his living room, and he was there, just standing in the window watching me. I later told my parents about it, but they just shrugged it off. I'm a pretty anxious soul, so I often just chalk things up to my anxiety. Fine. Not too long afterwards, though, my dogs had started to get sick. I would take them out to play and they'd start throwing up or have diarrhea. We knew that it wasn't their food because we didn't give them anything new. We also threw away the dog treats that we recently bought just in case that was the problem. But it didn't stop. I had started to notice that every time I let them out alone, they'd always run straight over Tom's fence jumping up and down and wagging their tails. He would slowly walk outside, reach over the fence, and then feed them his treats, which was really odd because Tom didn't even have a dog. I told my parents, and my dad went to talk to him, telling him the dogs were getting sick. Tom had apologized, and he had also stopped feeding them, and they got better. A few weeks later, I was coming home from school. My brother was in the grade above me, and I was a senior, so he was in college at the time. Whenever I got home, no one else would be home for a few more hours. I had a routine. I would put my book bag downstairs, then change clothes, let the dogs out of their cages on the porch, get a snack, and then let them back in. For some strange reason, I was just unusually excited to see my dogs that day. So instead of going upstairs, I went straight to the back porch. I had got to the door to open it, and I then saw Tom just sitting on the ground right in front of the dogs' cages. I froze. He didn't see me, though. I looked over to see if the door was locked, but it wasn't. I had began to lock it as slowly as possible so it didn't make a noise, but it did. Tom then looked over and he saw me standing there. I ran upstairs to go call my parents. My mom's a nurse, so she didn't have her phone on. And my dad, well, my dad just never answered the phone. I didn't really think that it was serious enough to call the police, so instead I just hid. After about a moment though, I had then heard Tom knock on the door. It wasn't loud or aggressive though. It was almost like friendly, like he just wanted to talk. I tried my dad's phone yet again and he then answered. I was crying hysterically and I had then told him that Tom was on the porch. He said he'd head home but he was about an hour away. I just sat in my room just waiting for my dad. The knocking stopped. All I remember was that my dad got home and Tom was gone. I don't really know what happened between Tom and my dad but he did stop coming outside and talking to me. He never did stop watching though. 
always standing in his living room. Sometimes I'd see him through the window and he would wave at me, but always with the light on, just so I knew that he was still there. It was pretty creepy. I'm a 21-year-old female, so I just recently moved into my first apartment. My neighbors are all really nice. I was actually introduced to them the day I moved in about three weeks ago. One of my neighbors is this guy named Paul. Paul stays outside most of the time, and he like always wants to talk. Now, I'm not too social. I'm totally fine with talking to people and having long conversations. But when I'm at home, I really just want to be inside with my pets and watching X-Files. Paul always talks to me like every second that he has the chance, knocking on my door to ask me something or inviting me over to chat like last week. Soon after I moved in, Paul had gave me his Wi-Fi password so that I could use it for my TV. He asked me for my phone number to send the photo of his internet box because the password's just a bunch of numbers and letters all jumbled up. I gave him my number and it was whatever. We never sent any texts apart from that photo. Then today, I had got a series of texts, saying that I have a secret admirer and that he wants to stay anonymous until we see where things go. At first, I just ignore it. That is, until he then uses my name and then says, Talk to me, yes or no. So now I'm totally freaked out. I entertain the texts, answering simply and just trying to find out who it is. He asked me for my preferences, my type, and my age preference. Pretty mildly weird and unsettling since he absolutely refuses to tell me who he is. Later on in the text, he says that we should have a secret affair, not tell anyone. He says that he's in his 40s and that we should sleep together and that he'll always support me financially. There's only one person in their 40s that has my number. My neighbor. My neighbor Paul, who's always outside talking to me any chance he gets and constantly staring at me. I tell him that I'm pretty positive that I know who he is, but he just insists that I don't. There's no coincidence in the fact that I got his text not even two weeks later after giving him my number. He says that he could have gotten it from a co-worker. Now, I work in a hospital, but in my department there's only five guys, but not a single one of my co-workers even have my number. So anyway, yeah... Now I have a creepy neighbor who propositioned me for sex in return for money, and I'm pretty much stuck here in a year lease, living about 10 feet away from him. So great. This event occurred when I was a child. I was around 8 years old at the time. My mom, my sister, and I had just moved into a new apartment complex, and we were really happy to finally have moved in, and everything was going pretty fine. My younger sister and I would always play outside almost every day, and soon enough, we had met our neighbor. He was really nice to us and would often give us candy and ice cream, but always told us not to ever tell our mom, which at the time, I didn't really give much thought to. We would sit outside and eat whatever treat he had given us that day, and then he would collect our trash, which we thought was really nice of him. He would always stare at us with a really creepy smile on his face, and I remember feeling really uncomfortable with it. On one day, my family was getting ready to go somewhere, and while my mom was getting ready, my sister and I just went outside to play. After some time, we had heard a whisper coming from upstairs. It was our neighbor, and he was poking his head out of his front door. He then said, Hey girls, I've got some candy, but if you really want it, you're going to have to come up here to get it. My sister and I, being really naive children, got really excited, and we started to walk up the stairs to his apartment. While we ascended up the stairs, he had a really wild smile and a finger up to his mouth, like he was motioning us to be quiet. We were about halfway up the stairs when my mom then came out and told us to come back down. Then the man immediately closed his door. After that happened, my mom wouldn't let us go outside alone anymore, and our neighbor stopped talking to us completely. Looking back on this, I was so foolish to take things from a man that I barely even knew. If my mom wouldn't have called out to us, who knows what would have happened to me and my sister. Not too long after, we had moved to a different location. To that really creepy man that almost successfully lured us into his home. I'm really glad you didn't succeed. When I was 11, almost 12... 
there was this woman living above me that was a coke dealer. The night of my 12th birthday, she had went missing. Not long after, her boyfriend came down to ask if he could use our phone. This happened in 2004, so having a cell phone was more of an exception than a rule, at least for my area. For a little context, I was home alone at the time while my mom was at work about a five minute walk away. My mom had let our neighbor and her boyfriend come to use our phone several other times before, so I assumed nothing was wrong with it and just let him in, bringing him into the living room which is towards the front of our apartment to use the phone in there. He picks up the receiver, dials a number, waits for a few seconds, then hangs up the phone. He does this a couple more times before the front door of the building then opens. Now, you can easily hear the front door open from where we were. It's a heavy door and the walls are really thin. And the way that our building is set up, it's a really small, old single family house converted into apartments. Me and my mom's apartment was the only one on the first floor, and our upstairs neighbor's apartment was literally the only one above us. Kind of irrelevant, but there was also a much smaller apartment below us. Anyways, my neighbor's boyfriend then looked at me pointing his finger right up to his lips, as if he was trying to shush me or something. He then went on to tell me not to tell anyone he was there, before then speed walking to my room right at the other end of the apartment. I then watched my bedroom door then close, right before there was a loud, hard, cop-like knock right on the door. My jaw then dropped as I opened the door to see a cop. The cop had then asked me if my neighbor's boyfriend was there. Being really scared, I had stammered out, yeah, he just went into my room. The officer asked if he could come in, which I agreed to, and as he was coming in, he asked if I could let his partner in the back door and lead them to my room. We started to walk together to the back of the apartment so that I could let his partner in. Now, the back door to the apartment was right next to my bedroom door, but we had to walk around the kitchen table to get there. After I let them into my room, I had then watched as they then pulled my neighbor's boyfriend right out of my bedroom closet. As they brought him out of my room and towards the back door, they had told me to go wait in the living room while they had then brought him to the back door. I walked back to the living room and after they closed the door, I couldn't really hear what they were saying but I could then hear the distinct sound of metal clicking and I quickly realized that he had just been handcuffed. Still pretty scared, I waited for the police car to drive away before grabbing my keys, making sure the back door was locked and locking the front door on my way out. I decided to head to my mom's work, now crying. I'm pretty sure I cut the five minute trip into about two minutes and I've never been a fast runner in my life. I was pretty much fueled entirely on adrenaline and fear at that point and I just really wanted my mom. When I told her what happened, my mom was so pissed off that he had used me in the way that he did, hiding out in a child's bedroom closet of all places and trying to keep the cops from finding him there. She gave me a pretty short but gentle lecture that night about not letting people in to use the phone, telling me that I wasn't to let people use our phone even if I knew them unless she was home. I don't really want to know exactly what he was wanted for, nor do I want to know what would have happened if the cops hadn't shown up when they did. To start off this story, I was a really naive teenager and the first 12 or 13 years of my life were very sheltered. I grew up in a small town community and I actually attended schools that had fewer than 100 students. We moved when I was about 14 to a larger urban area and at that new house was where I had then met the neighbor in question. I didn't really realize it until recently when I really thought about that period of my life that he was trying to groom me. I really could have been a potential victim of his. It's been about 12 years since then and I've now just realized what he was trying to do. When I was about 14 we had moved, packed up our lives and just moved. We moved into a pretty quiet cul-de-sac and I had attended the local school. My mom found a new job and she worked a lot so she was out of the house quite a bit. I had an older brother but he was about 20 years old and always partying out and staying at other people's houses so I saw him even less than I did my mom. I met the creepy neighbor the day after we moved in. He lived about three houses down from us and because it was a sleepy cul-de-sac, he had seen the comings and goings of the cars and moving trucks. He came over and introduced himself and then presented my mom with a dish of lasagna and asked if there was anything he could do to help us. 
Normally my mom is actually quite wary of new people, and she's really been burned by users and abusers in the past, but she seems pretty comfortable around the neighbor, and he did very much put her at ease, even making her smile and laugh. He helped us with some of the larger items of furniture, and he even gave my mom the contact information for the local plumbers and electricians should we need them. He had also told us which were the best companies in town for the internet, things like that. In short, he was very friendly and helpful, always going out of his way to make sure we were settled in. At first, he kept to himself. We didn't really see him in the first three months. If I ever walked past and he was in his garden, then of course I would stop by and say hello. He would ask me a lot of questions. He asked about school, my friends, which teachers I liked, which I didn't like, and he also asked me which subjects I liked and if I had homework. Again, I didn't really read too much into this. He was just being polite and neighborly. He had figured out my mom's work pattern and that I was home alone a lot after school. Then he became even bolder. One day I was walking home and it was after four and I had volleyball practice. He was out in his garden. It was a really hot day that day and he said hello to me and asked me about school. He asked if I had enjoyed practice that day. Then he invited me inside for a glass of lemonade. I told him that I needed to get home and go and get dinner started so that my mom had something to eat when she finished in a few hours. He told me that it was just a glass of lemonade and I really didn't have anything to worry about. Long story short, most weeks after practice I'd always have something to drink with him. He was really easy to talk to and really friendly. He wasn't like any of the other grown ups in my life. Looking back on it now, it seemed that it was really easy to relate to him in a way. He wasn't trying too hard to be cool, but he really seemed to trust my intelligence in a way that no other adult would. He wasn't condescending and he wasn't a rule enforcer like all of the other teachers or adults in my life. He also started dropping by the house a bit too. On the odd chance that my mom had gotten off work early or if it was her day off, then he wouldn't. And if my brother was home, then again, not a peep out of him. But if it was the evening and I was home alone, that on most days he would definitely come by. He was quite a good gardener, so he'd ask what had been left for me to start dinner with, and he'd always give me tips or sometimes he'd go to his garden and pick me some herbs to go into the meal. He would also pick me flowers from his garden. Every time I thanked him, he would always say something along the lines of, That's what friends are for. Or, You deserve flowers. You worked so hard in school. One time he even said to me, Pretty flowers for a pretty girl. That one washed right over me. I thanked him and put the flowers in a vase, not really thinking too much into it at all. Somehow, he had then found out it was my birthday, and so about two days after, when I was once more home alone, he had came by and gave me a silver bracelet. When I told him I couldn't accept it, he then shushed me and then said, Nonsense. Don't think anything of it. Then he told me that it could be our fun little secret and that I could only wear it when no one else was around. It could be our fun little thing and I could always think of him when I'm wearing it. Again, despite the fact that there were all these red flags, I just didn't really think too much into it. He was the neighbor and he was being a friend and keeping an eye on me because he knew I was home alone a lot. He very much wanted me to believe that I could trust him and view him as this protector who I could always go to if I ever needed something. I got a few more gifts from him over time, and again, I was always told that it was our little secret, and that no one else ever needed to know and that they wouldn't understand the dynamics of our friendship. After all, you wouldn't want to get the both of us in trouble, he told me. And he was right, I didn't. Then out of nowhere, one day he had hugged me. I had quickly gone over to his house to help with some odd job, and he hugged me. I'm also almost certain that he also sniffed my hair, but I can't really remember. I remember feeling like it wasn't right. By that point, I think I was about 16, almost 17, and we had been friends for about two years now. He tried to convince me to stay even longer, and I really remember having to literally spell it out to him that I had to get home. I ran the very short distance home, and I must have looked out of sorts, because my brother who was home for once had actually asked me what was wrong. I didn't tell him about the neighbor. I just made up some bullcrap story about the neighborhood kids and them being rude and bullying me. So luckily the next few times I went out, he was always there to protect me. He wouldn't let me out of the house without him. 
I think that he sensed that I was really scared. The neighbors seeing us always together and that my brother was actually home for a change had backed right off. We had moved about two months later. My mom got a better job and we could afford a nicer house in a nicer area, so we then moved. I shudder to think about what would have happened if I stayed on the day that he hugged me, and it really makes me sick to think that I ever ate or drank anything he gave me. It could have been spiked. I just really can't believe that I was so easily fooled and was able to let someone do that to me. I'm really glad we moved away. <laughs>